I survived 100 days in Pokemon Emerald, but it was open world. Yes, this is Pokemon Emerald, but we can start from anywhere. The game is randomized. So we make ourselves a new character and the rules are simple. We have to set the game to hard mode. We're going to name ourselves Polo because of Polo G. And of course, one important thing, we're going to get randomized. So any Pokemon we get will be totally random, including our starter Pokemon. And so starts our journey where we have to do this game and try to survive for those 100 days. And I'm going to tell you, it gets wild. So let's go. Here we go, guys. So our starter Pokemon ends up being a Tyro, which which I'm going to be honest, was pretty much useless in the beginning. And we get 3,000 Poke Dollars to start off with. But our starting city is Sotopolis, the literal last city you're going to be finding the last gym in in regular Emerald. So this is where we start from, which means from now on, we can take on any gym in any order, but we have to get to the different places in the world to unlock them, to travel to them. But Tyrog, of course, is not going to be the best. So we have to go get ourselves a second Pokemon, which is what we do right away. Now, the first Pokemon we actually find and decide to catch is a Pharaoh Seed. But I should point one very important thing out, which is we're only allowed to catch 10 Pokemon, not counting our starter, which means we are limited on how many we can get. So Pharaoh Seed is the first one we get, and we named this guy D's Nuts because it only made sense. Then we look into the Cave of Origin, where of course Groudon or Kyogre should be, and guess what? We find a Sable Knight, which we have no use for just yet, but maybe down the line. We'll see. So, of course, we don't really need HMs in this, so we can just dive right out and go around looking for new Pokemon outside, which we definitely do need. So, first things first, remember, this is randomized, and one of the second Pokemon we find here, which will be our second capture, is Honedge. Yes, Honedge is going to be our second Pokemon we're going to be adding to our team, and I think it's a perfect Pokemon. Of course, it is kind of stupid. We did have two Steel types now, so I did make that mistake. But, however, we do get the Honedge, and we name it Excalibur. That's the name we give to it, because I think it's the perfect name, and it's suggested by chat. Also, we stream this on Twitch. Either way, guys, we've now made it to Moss Deep City, so now we're a few days already into our playthrough and our run and we've made it all the way here as of so far now remember we got loads of things to do before we can take on the first gym which is to grind 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 because remember this is hard mode which means our levels are limited we're always going to be under level compared to the gym no matter what so we're going to make sure we do a lot of grinding against random trainers like these guys to make sure we get those levels on tyro because remember this guy has basically no moves right now we need him to get to level 20 to get himself well essentially evolved and also to gain loads of moves we really need and of course i make it to juan's gym and i do the cleanest run you've ever seen of his puzzle. Mmm, it was so satisfying. Didn't need no guide, just did this because I'm just good, okay? I'm just freaking good. But either way, let's take on Juan. So, Juan has got an interesting team. Remember, it's all randomized, but he starts off with a Larvitar. I go in, of course, with Excalibur because it is currently our only useful Pokemon. And luckily, God bless the Area Lakes for existing because it's the only move that does anything for us. We're down to 3 HP at this point, but that is not the end of the world. We do also have Tyrogue, which we tried to use with a fake out because we do get that initial flinch, which is needed. However, I'm going to be honest, we had to rely a lot on these nuts. And because these nuts have iron barbs, it literally saves us. Because if these guys go for any physical attacks on us, we can pretty much survive it. So it doesn't matter. Look at that one HP. And we pretty much get the clutch here because the double slap mixes on the Chansey. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we win the battle because Juan's Chansey missed double slap. So there you go. The first gym badge down. We're already a few days in. Let's continue. So we make our way over to Lily Cove City by surfing. Because remember, we literally do not need HMs. You can just surf nilly willy and do whatever you want. You even have a bike available straight away. But we got to get to Lily Cove City because from here we can explore the rest of the region and get all the way to, you know, Mobile City and whatever else we need. So this is our starting point we gotta go heal up and let's continue so we make sure to go into the little department store to get ourselves any things we need and then we head to the following routes where the safari zone is to make sure we can get some leveling in once again because the next gym is going to be difficult so we got to make sure we are at least slightly stronger i don't want to take on the moss deep gym just yet as it is going to be more difficult due to those double battles so we're going to keep that for later then I spent about 10 minutes trying to convince chat that we should catch a Houndor because it's a better fire type than any other option. And totally wasn't correct, but I definitely tried to convince them. So we make our way to Fortree City. Here we're going to be taking on our second gym badge, which I don't think is going to be that difficult because honestly, Fortree City shouldn't be that hard. However, I didn't take into account the hard mode means that a lot of these trainers or gym leaders in this case might have a full team of six Pokemon every single time, which means we're going to be struggling quite a bit. Before taking on the actual gym leader, though, we end up finding a Poppy on the Wild, which we want to catch. However, instead, we end up wasting all our Pokeballs on it, and I feel quite depressed about it. However, this actually doesn't matter, because we get our revenge by going and taking on Wynona, the gym leader, which is our second badge. So she starts off with Sheldon, which we get rid of with Excalibur, which is definitely our strongest Pokemon. We Shadow Sneak into her Muna. Then she has a Lombre, which again, we Shadow Sneak into, and we finish off her last Pokemon, which in this case is a Nose Pass. So... She ends up being the easiest gym leader so far. Remember, 
She's only the first one. We got loads more to come. So we're now making our way all the way to Route 112. But along the way, we do run into something very interesting. A Brioni. And guess what? We do actually capture this one. So it was the perfect kind of revenge for not getting the popular earlier and wasting all our Pokeballs. But this time, we actually get it. We capture the Brioni. We make our way to Route 112. And now we are in Mobile City. And now that we are here in this city, we make sure to heal ourselves up. It is very important, honestly, in this game to do that. But next up, we actually take on the gym where Watson is. But we really realized early on that this probably isn't going to work because these guys are way over leveled than us and not all of our Pokemon are ready for this challenge. So we decided to actually leave it after a bit and do a bit of grinding, which we end up doing and this is definitely worth it because guess what? Tyrog finally evolves and we get ourselves a Hitmonlee. Yes, and Hitmonlee is a God sent, because oh my lord, without Hitmonlee, this this run would have been impossible, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, thank god, he actually is really, really useful. And now, we can make our way somewhere else, because we don't think we can take on Watson just yet, so maybe let's go to Rossboro instead. Remember, it's open world, we can go anywhere we want to. However, next up, we actually do something first, which is go to Route 110, and we found an Aerodactyl. And ladies and gentlemen, you guys already know, we had to add Aerodactyl into our team. Of course, we can't add Legendaries to our team to actually use, however, this is a fossil Pokemon, so it does does count, and it is a freaking awesome Pokemon. We capture it, and we name it Billy. Then we make our way through the cave system all the way to Rustboro, which doesn't take too long. We just had to grind through a few Pokemon, so it wasn't that difficult. However, once we get to Rustboro, we realize, okay, Roxanne's going to be maybe also a bit more difficult than we anticipated, so maybe we should go catch ourselves another Pokemon to add to the team. Currently, our team's looking pretty solid, but we need another Pokemon. So, we go to Route 104, and we catch ourselves a Larvitar and name it Hades, as suggested by my lovely fiancé. Then we actually battle these twins that have a Raboot in their team, which I just think is really awesome, by the way. Having the actual sprite of a Gen 8 Pokemon in an old school game just looks really awesome. However, we then have to make our way back to Roxanne and finally put her in her place. I'm going to be honest, this battle was really difficult. She has six Pokemon, as you can see. She starts off with a Cherim. We go with our boy... Um, well, Excalibur with the Swords Dance setup, which we tried to do because Swords Dance, we're able to actually set up about one of them and then Aerial Ace our way through. However, apparently this Cherim is just able to outspeed us no matter what. However, the bigger problem is the do what. So we go for Shadow Sneak because we do outspeed with that. Then we have to switch out into Hitmonlee because we do lose there. We go for the Brick Break and it's enough to take out her do what. And then she pops in her Golbat. Now, this thing is more difficult. We don't really have a lot of moves that we can use against it, so it is a bit more stressful. We tried going Brick Break, but it doesn't really do a lot for us, so we're kind of screwed at this point. We've lost two Pokemon, and she still has a lot to work with. We do have, though, our Brioni, aka uh, our boy Depp here, uh, but we don't go for him. We actually go for Hades, which is our Larvitar that we recently got, and we've got Rock Slide on him, which we get super lucky and hit pretty much three times in a row. I do not know what our lucky chances were there, but we did hit it every single time. And then we lose it. But we do have Billy, our Billy boy, with Wing Attack. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Wing Attack is one of the best moves that exists in existence at all in Pokemon. Her Kabasking, though, is going to be a bit more difficult because we do not have any water Pokemon, really, in our team besides Johnny here. And uh, we do have the Aqua Jet, but again, it doesn't do a lot. So we go for the Bubble Beam, and it does more damage, and we do it. He's now up at level 29, and the last Pokemon on our team is Nickit, which uh, we can't take with the depth, but we do have our boy D's Nuts, which, of course, with the Iron Bobs is perfect because all that damage they take back on them is amazing. So there you go, guys. The third gym badge is in the bag. Let's move on to the next one. Which we, you guys might be thinking, oh, he's going to go to Pedalberg. No, we actually go back to Mobile because I thought, oh, okay, now might be, you know, the time to take on Watson. But that was a mistake. It wasn't going to be working. So instead, I decide, okay, we can't get him. Well, maybe we can take on Flaneri, which is further up. And we have to unlock that area anyway. So let's do that. And along the way, guess what? Our boy Larvitar, aka Hades, actually evolves into a Puppetar, which is awesome. But I'm going to be honest, it's going to take a long time until we get a Tarantar. So we're not really sure if we're going to be keeping this guy on the team on the long run. But before we go and take on Flaneri, we actually go and do some wonder trading with this random free Pichu that was gifted to us in the game. Yes, you can do wonder trading in this game, which is bloody insane. However, don't wonder trade your Pichu. You might actually need it. And on top of that, you're probably going to be rewarded with a really bad Caterpie, just like I was right here, which I then traded for another one, which ended up being a Cacturn instead. We never get to use this Pokemon because it's kind of against the rules in this case. So just keep that in mind. However, we now make our way all the way up to Flaneri. And along the way, we might catch ourselves a brand new Pokemon. So now we're running around in the Magma Hideout Cave that's up here. And guess what? Along the way also, we've spent about our first 40 days or so in the game. However we run into a Rowlet, which of course I have to capture, even if it's going to take up one of our spots in our team, and it's going to waste one of our captures, I feel like I need to have it, because come on, it is my literal mascot, so I have to capture it, but that's not even the biggest thing, we name it Ruffled, and then shortly after there, 
we actually find a frog deer. Yes, we'd already seen a froakie here or there, but a frog deer, and we again had to capture it. This one, again, also named by my fiance. This one named Sensei. But before we do anything else, and before we take on Flaneri, we actually made sure to do a little bit of leveling on our boys, because now we have Ruffled in our team, and we also have, of course, Sensei. But these guys are not strong enough to take on anybody at the moment, because they're very underleveled compared to the rest of our team. So we do a bit of leveling, and along the way, guess what? Well, Rowlet actually evolves into a Dartrix. A little bit more grinding later, and guess what? Our Excalibur evolves into a Dewblade, which is really handy and makes him slightly stronger. So instead of actually taking on Flaneri, we backpedal alongside Chad, because they suggested, let's just do it. We backpedal all the way back to Watson and decide to try him on again, but this time with Sensei and Ruffled on our team. So Carbink is first up, and we Water Pulse him with Sensei, which is good enough just to get rid of that first guy in his team. We also level up from this, but next up is Twacky. Twacky, oh man, Twacky destroys Sensei because of that Razor Leaf. However, Excalibur comes in, and we go for the Swords Dance because we can take a few hits of his knockoff, and honestly, we don't really have an item on him anyways, but the Shadow Ball is the problem. Here, we've already set up, but if we don't outspeed, we're screwed. So we got a Shadow Sneak against Cafagras, and we get that hit because of the two set-up Swords Dances. That's enough. That's all we needed. So at this point, we're up against Sand Slash, and I'm thinking, if we go Aerial Ace, this thing, well, we're not going to hit it. It's probably going to outspeed us, or it's going to go do some bullshit. So instead, Shadow Sneak, because we get that priority, of course, and he, of course, does go for the dig, which takes us out, but it's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world, okay? I think to myself, okay, we've pretty much lost this, but we have Ruffle, and Ruffle does have Razor Leaf, which should be able to do the work here, because his Thunderbolt is not going to do anything. So we Razor Leaf, however, he switches out into his Unpheasant, which, let's just say, is a bit more hard to deal with, because it does have the Ice Fang, which I can't do much against. So, instead, Hitmonlee comes out, and we kind of lose it as well. But I've got to say, these nuts, these nuts are blessed. God bless these nuts for being so strong. Because without these nuts, we wouldn't have been able to do it. So, we are now stuck against, uh, well, a Sand Slash, and we only really have Billy left. Billy does have Thunderfang, which is super useful against a Skrelp. But it does poison us, though, as we hit it. And now we just have 3 HP left. And guess what? Thank God for the Iron Bob, because that killed the Sand Slash. And we got through the battle, guys. We get the Oval Charm from Watson, and we have now defeated another gym leader. So, now we've actually found ourselves a Snorlax, and we decide, okay, it only makes sense to catch this big boy and add him to our team, which we do. We capture him, and we name him Baymax, because it's a cute name, so there you go. So, next up, though, Decidueye actually evolves after us doing a little bit of leveling. I didn't even know that you guys could have actual EXP share on in this game. There's loads of features. You can even change your outfit to look like you're from Fire Red. But after we've done this, we decide, okay, guess what? It's time to take on Flaneri, finally, and, uh, that's what we do, lads. She starts off with a Decidueye, which we Blaze Kick, because that's what we have on Hitmali right here. She does have a Citrus Berry, which just gives a little bit of HP back. With a Pluck, though, is a bit problematic. However, two Blaze Kicks in, and the Decidueye is gone. And we've also leveled up quite a bit from that. Next is Cramorant in our team, and we go for the Sucker Punch, because we do get the, you know, priority on that move. However, Hitmali is now gone, so we switch into these Nuts, which take raid... Oh, just get rid of a uh, Cramorant. Next is, however, Unknown. This is a Pokemon that's quite difficult to deal with. It has Heat Wave as well well, which doesn't really help us in this case, because these nuts is a steel type, which cannot handle any of those fire type moves. So we're kind of kind of debating here at this point with chat, what do we go for? Well, Baymax seemed like the most logical choice, because we do have Crunch on him. So we go into Baymax, we Crunch Unknown, but it's not enough. However, thank God this guy has leftovers. He really loves to eat his food, and he's a big chunky boy, and that makes sense. So we make sure to use that, well, sit, you know, kind of leftovers to our advantage here. And of course, the Crunch. But it does still leave it at about 4 or 5 HP left at the end there. So we have to make a decision. Is it going to be Excalibur that goes in next or someone else? Well, the choice was Excalibur because we do have the Shadow Sneak, which does outspeed, which is perfect. This means that she has three Pokemon left. Snob is next up, but we do have Iron Head, so we go for that as well as Aerial Ace, which uh, is kind of better because it is a bug type at the end of the day as well. So we do that. Next is Jigglypuff. So we do have the advantage. This is a Fairy type. Steel types have an advantage. Iron heading it, and it is dead. There is not much left for Jigglypuff at this point, leaving only her Baldor left. Again, Iron Head, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless Excalibur for being such a strong Pokemon and a great Steel type. And that is it. For Neri is done. We've gotten the Heat Badge, and guess what? We also got a nice Rod in the, you know, included as well there. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a nice Rod, but we're not going to really be doing a lot of fishing. Instead, we fly back to well, in this case. 
Rossborough City, and then make our way down to Petalburg City. Why? Because this is where our next gym is headed. Now, I actually thought when I was doing this stream version of this that, hey, guess what? We're going to do about two gyms per stream, and eventually we'll be done with this. But th that was a mistake. I sat down for nine hours straight and just finished the whole thing. The whole run, the whole hundred days in game was just finished all in a very, very long stream. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to be honest. This gym, the Pedalburg gym, ended up being the easiest one that we actually took on out of all the other ones. So here we go. So ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Our papa, quite literally, where we're going to be taking on here. And uh, the man, he could be more difficult than, well, he should have been. So Norman, in this case... Starts off with an Octillery. We go for High Jump Kick, which is perfect with this Hitmonlee. It's just the perfect Pokemon to use. But he keeps using Icicle on us here, which um, is a little bit annoying because our HP is quite down a bit from just that one, you know, run of Icicles. However, Octillery is gone. Next up, though, I don't really know what his other Pokemon is going to be because it could quite literally be anything in this case, right? So... Here's what he actually pops out. He gives us a Crawdunt. And again, High Jump Kick is great because of the dark typing on that guy. So we get him, and we also get a little bit of experience from that. Gets us level 47 on Hitmali. So you guys can already see our levels have progressed quite a bit since last time around in the last battle. Now, guys, we are offered takedown. We don't take it. His Crabrawler is next, though, which does use Fake Out on us that flinches us, which is a bit annoying. But again, High Jump Kick, Hitmonlee does all the work. This is why I told you guys early on, Hitmonlee, when it started as a Tyrogue, was kind of useless. We didn't really know what to do with it. But once we got Hitmonlee, this is when things change. This is when things just got so much better, man. And we had an easier time doing everything. So Shadow Ball comes out first on these nuts. We then just keep using, well, in, in pretty much just Metal Claw over and over again until hopefully we get rid of the Pump Kaboo. Because there's not really much else we can do. It does have, like, I think a Citrus Berry in this case, which just kind of delays the battle more than anything. Thing, but eventually we get it and our attack rises, which is perfect because who's coming next if not an Oma Star? So we go for Power Whip, but I think we are just on the edge here and we end up actually missing it, which is unfortunate. However, he goes for the Ancient Power this time around. The Power Whip comes in and it's a one-hit KO. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited because his last Pokemon is also Oma Star, but guess what? It doesn't matter. He has one Pokemon left and our team is is still pretty much full. We have, I think, still four Pokemon, and we do even do the Iron Barb damage there as the recoil on him as well. We go Razor Leaf on Ruffled because, well, that's all we need. And ladies and gentlemen, that's Norman defeated. He does also reward us with a Lucky Egg here, which does come in handy if we're going to be doing some leveling later on, especially before the Elite Four. Now, at this point, we've gotten more than enough badges. Let's move on to the next one, which is going to be in Duford. So once we make it to Duford, we go into the cave to do a little bit more extra leveling before we take out the gym here. However, we end up finding a Torchic, which is the perfect addition to our team, because remember, we are missing a fire type. We have water, we have grass, we have fighting, we have, well, even the steel type in this case, but we did not have anything in terms of fire types. So Torchic is what we add to our team, and make sure to nickname it Chicken Nugget, because it only made sense. A lot of people suggested KFC, but I'm gonna be honest, Chicken Nugget just made more sense, in my opinion. Then we do a bunch of speed leveling, which allows Torchic to evolve into Combuskin, and shortly after that, already into a Blaziken. So we already had this guy leveled up and ready to go, because we have a big battle battle to do against Brawly. This guy is difficult, man. Uh, his team is quite special, so here we go. Let's take him on. So, Brawly starts off his battle against me by, uh, well, kind of making fun of me, but that does not last for long, because Brawly, my friend, we are ready to demolish you. So he starts off with the Lunatone, and we already know that we can start off with specifically using Swords Dance on Escalibur here, I think almost three times, because the Lunatone doesn't really do much damage to us. It just kind of uses Ice Punches, so we double and then triple, I really mean it, triple Swords Dance all the way in here. Now, Future Sight does do a little bit of damage to us, but we got the Shadow Sneak, which means we can get rid of the Lunatone right away. So remember, we've set up quite a bit of damage here on Excalibur. He is ready to demolish more or less anything that he has against us, well, in this case. So, we have Excalibur level 57. We also have a lot of damage that's ready to be dealt out. What, however, is his next Pokemon? Well, he's going to hit us with the Spirit Tomb. Now, Spirit Tomb, I'm not going to lie, is dangerous. That Shadow Ball that it pops up on us is quite, quite damage dealing, if I'm going to be honest with you guys. It does a lot. However... Look at that. The Shadow Sneak does so much damage, but can we survive a Dark Pulse here? Because I'm not going to lie, well, Excalibur can't, okay? Excalibur cannot handle a single move from this Spirit Tomb. No matter how many times we can try this, it just doesn't work. However, Nugget is, again, like I said, Chicken Nugget 
is really strong. We got a level 53 now, and it, of course, is a really good Pokemon. We are talking about a Blaziken here, which is a strong Pokemon nonetheless, even if it is not as good as maybe Sceptile or Swampert in this case. But it is good enough with the Flamethrower to get rid of of the Spirit Tomb. Next, however, he has the Rhyferior, so we just decide, okay, we have a few options here. We can either try to use Brave Bird or Flare Blitz or whatever, or we can also switch out, but we go for the Brave Bird, which I don't know if that was really the smartest choice to do here. It doesn't do any kind of damage, and we lose Nugget really quickly, and we decide instead to go into Hitmonlee because he does have the high jump kick, which makes him into a fearful enemy against the Rhyferior because of his typing in this case. So there we go, Rhyferior is gone, but we still have a Delmice on his team that I am very scared of, because this Delmice actually caused a lot of trouble, as well as the Komala. Now, the Komala, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this Komala is ridiculous. And also, Komala really should get an evolution, by the way. But we go for close combat because, well, it does a little bit more damage. We do lose a little bit of our defense there because of that, of course, which isn't really the best. Losing that special and regular defense is not really the smartest thing to do. But remember, we do have the Pokemon lead right now. He has two Pokemon left. One of them is Delmice, as you guys can see right here. But the other one is not going to be that big of a problem. But we also have Blaze Kick, which is good against Delmice because of its, I think, uh, Steel Tapping in this case. And guess what? The Blaze Kick does do a hefty amount of damage. But he does take us out in the end anyways. So we're thinking. Ruffled does have a good typing against it. I guess, kind of, not really. But we do also have Wing Attack on Billy, which should be enough just to get rid of it, which it is, leaving him with only one Pokemon left in his team right now. And this one last Pokemon is none else than Cloyster, the uh, very sus, sus, very, very sus looking Pokemon, if you guys know what I mean. I mean, look at this thing. So, we just go for the Thunderfang, which is uh, not enough uh, to kill it, but we get the flinch. As you guys can see on my face, I get very excited about that. Yes, I haven't been this excited since the, since the first time I actually saw some booty, but that's besides the point. Let's continue. So, Thunderfang is coming in next. We Thunderfang the shit out of this guy, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have defeated Brawly, which means now we have to go take on the final gym, the Double Trouble Twins. Let's go. So, I had assumed that these two would actually be uh, slightly more difficult to defeat, just because they do have that double battle setup. But I'm going to be honest, because of the Gorgais and Mudstale being the first two, and we, of course, had our Hitmonlee and Excalibur up first, we actually end up getting pretty much rid of them very quickly. Now, I thought I already killed the uh, Gorgais, but it just it just used one of its moves, and I couldn't even tell it was still there. So, we end up losing Hitmonlee, which does scare me a bit, because I'm just like, nope, I want to get rid of these guys quickly and get to the Elite Four, because the Elite four we wanted to get to them within this hundred day in-game span so we're trying our best at this point he goes for the mega kick on the mudsdale but that's not enough we do have the shadow sneak of course and we uh, also try to set up a few swords dances which uh, maybe wasn't the smartest idea because excalibur can't take any hits from jellicent but remember we do still have ruffled with that you know grass typing so we do switch into him and make sure to go for well aerial ace to start with and then of course shadow sneak over to the mudsdale leaf blade of course is enough to get rid of jellicent in this case as, as well as it is you know Water typing in this case. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Jellicent is taken out in one hit, a one hit KO. And uh, we now have to switch in Nugget because, uh, well, guess what? The uh, starter Pokemon have to do all the work in this case. They got a chat out and a victory bell. But we do have, of course, well, as you guys can see, a fire type. So we are not that worried. He does go for, I think, Gunk Shot over to Ruffled here, which ends up lowering his HP quite a bit. But we have just enough to get rid of him with the uh, Flare Blitz, I think, in this case. And. Also, we use Flamethrower on Shatot, which leaves it on a very low HP. He does pull out the Mandy Buzz, however, and I think at this point, this is one of his last Pokemon. We go for Thunderfang on the Shatot, which kills it with Billy, and we finish things off with the Flamethrower and the double combo here with Billy and whatnot. Now, this was our first try taken on the gym. First try, and guess what? It actually worked. Like, it, it actually straight up worked. Now, we get really lucky here. We just go for the wing attack. The burn is there. The burn is just enough to get rid of him with the final wing attack. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We defeated the final gym, and this means we are now ready to take on the Elite Four. And this is going to be quite a doozy. Now, the twins gave us a shiny charm, and then we head to the Victory Road, where we get stopped by, uh, well, none else than uh, our boy Wally himself. And I'm going to be honest, he wants to do the most crazy double battle. He has a Sigilith and a Pin Urchin as his two first Pokemon, and these two 
are incredibly difficult to defeat. So we kick off with, of course, Hitmonlee and Billy in this case. We go for, I think, Stone Edge and get rid of the Sigilith very quickly on. But then we go for the Mega Punch, I think, in this case. That does do quite a bit of damage. We get rid of the two of them very quickly on, or actually close combat in this case. But we go for Thunder Fang on the Kingdra. Doesn't do a lot of damage. However, Hydreigon is gone from that close combat there. So that was just enough. He also has a Chatot. Again, I don't know what all these guys do with all these Chatots, but Stone Edge is, again, enough to get rid of him. I get really excited because we had to rebattle him a few times to get here. We go for the close combat on the Kingdra. It's not enough. They get rid of Billy, which made me quite angry because Billy is our boy. You know, comment B for Billy in the chat. And either way, guys, so... You've got a Raticate left here with a Kingdra that's quite low HP. We get hit by a Thunderbolt there that doesn't do much. We go and destroy. I mean, really obliterate that Raticate. It's more obliterated than Blue's Raticate. And we finish off his team with that Kingdra in there, meaning we have defeated Wally, our rival, who literally only battled us one time. And now we can take on the Elite Four once and for all. But before doing any of that, we actually do need a lot of money because guess what? Without revives and full restores, we're not really going to get far in this challenge. So we got to make sure we go back, we actually get our hands on some money. So we go to the sunken ship and talk to a bunch of characters, do a bunch of little puzzles in there to try to get as much money and stuff as we can. Also, we tried to find the Blaziken Megastone, but we couldn't find Blazikenite anywhere. I mean, we could get it. We read the documentation, the info on where to find it, but we ended up just being too stupid to find it and too lazy, to be frankly honest. So instead, we go back and we now have all the badges. We're ready to take on the Elite Four. We defeated our rival and we switch out a few Pokemon. Our team has to be kind of mixed up for us to be able to defeat all these guys solidly. And I don't even know if we have enough money actually to be able to buy enough items to do this. So let's try our best. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 1 a.m. in the morning as I am actually streaming this. And guess what? We're taking on Sydney first. He kicks off with a Scrafty, which we go for the high jump kick. Now, at this point, we've given Hitmonlee a choice scarf, so he's choice scarfed into the high jump kick, but it's enough to sweep through his first three Pokemon. He has a Mega Absol, which scared the shit out of me the first time I battled him, but then we realized, well, we can just sweep through the first three Pokemon without too much trouble, and then the Mandibus is going to be taking us out. But it's not the end of the world, though, because we now switch, and we can go for the Thunderfang to take out the Mandibus with Billy, which we end up doing, meaning that he just has really Sharpedo and, like, one more Pokemon left at this point, and he's already wasted his Mega, so we're not too concerned. But he's got the Hydreigon, and we have three Pokemon that can still do a lot of work. Of course, our boy Depp is here, and ready to use some of those Fairy-type moves, well, specifically, I think Moonlight in this case was enough. But there you go, guys. Sydney has been defeated, meaning we are now heading into the next man. Of course, or actually not man in this case, it is a lady... A uh, very, very dangerous lady by the name of Phoebe. So, before we actually take her on, we had to make sure that our team was set up the right way and use our items. Now, we are limited. We only had a few full restores. So, we take out our first two Pokemon um, quite solidly, I, well, I would argue, right? So, we got rid of the first guy and the Golurk as well as the Miss Magus. The Delmice comes in, though. We switch into Nugget for the Blaze Kick, which is just enough to get rid of it. Chandelure, though, does get rid of our boy here, but we end up with Depp left, who does a lot of the actual damage with Ice Beam here against the Banette, which is mega evolved but we get rid of it quickly leaving only Aegislash slash left and guess what ladies and gentlemen our boy does it Excalibur comes in and he finishes it off leaving only one battle to go and get Glacia she's got an Obama's note to start with we kick off things here by trying to go for that blaze kick which does do enough however we can't really do a lot against this guy the wall rain is kind of more dangerous so we quickly switch in she does have a mega Glalie though which we get rid of with the high jump kicks again Hitmon Lee has been doing most of the work here, leaving only her Vanillux as the last Pokemon. Meaning now, we are down real bad, okay? We only have about 7 full restores left and about 10 revives. So, we are limited on what we can really use and what options we have here. But, this means that our last battle against uh, the Dragon Man himself is not going to be that difficult because we do have Depp here with the Moonblast and the Ice Beam. And the Ice Beam is honestly all we need because... Guess what? The dragon types can't handle the fairy types whatsoever. So, Dugalgi is not too much trouble. We get rid of him with the Brave Bird. However, we do lose Nugget here at this point, meaning Hitmonlee has to come in and do the high jump kicks. And uh, I'm going to be honest, the Mega in this case is a Mega Salamance. But we do have Ice Beam on Baymax, which we gave him. And you guys can see I'm so excited and happy at this point because, ladies and gentlemen, we had been trying this for such a long time, meaning the champion himself, the last man up, is here. So, Drake has been defeated. And ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with the champion battle. 
Of course, it's Wallace this time around, and uh, we start off with Baymax using Hammer Arm. At this point, I'm so tired, it is literally 2 a.m. or something, I don't even remember. He switches into Mantine, we go for the Crunch, which is good because we can get that flinch. However, we don't, and he Focus Blasts us quite a few times, but Crunch does enough to get rid of him, meaning we are now in a good position. He's got a Clawitzer. We do not, like, manage to do a lot more there with Baymax. You guys can see Nugget and Depp were not even healed. We didn't even heal them. We didn't give them a full restore because we had no left. We're not even fully healed going into this battle. So we switch over into Hitmonlee, go for the high jump kick, which means we are locked into it now. We're stuck with high jump kick, and we get rid of the next Politoed. Melodic is next up, but I decide, okay, we're going to sacrifice Nugget. It only makes sense. He got the burn, though, going in here. Melodic, we just moon... Moonlight the crap out of it, okay? And it is gone. Thunder Thag from Billy does the last piece of damage. We're going to Excalibur and use Shadow Sneak. And the last Pokemon he has now is a Swampert, pretty much, which is Mega Evolved. We go for the high jump kick with Hitmonlee, which does enough. And ladies and gentlemen, you guys can see my excitement in the background. We finally did it. This was so late at night, and we finally defeated Wallace. This, I'm gonna be honest, took us about two hours of doing. So my excitement is very much justified. And also, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I should point out something crazy does happen at the end there, so stick by. So after a grueling, and I really mean grueling, nine hour stream, we finally get into the Hall of Fame. O only one issue, though. Uh, the game has had bugs throughout the whole journey, or at least there's been a bug with Visual Boy Advance, the emulator, which causes us to actually get a save fail, which means everything we've been doing was all for nothing. So yes, our 100 days spent in the game and our challenge was pretty much pointless. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. If you guys want to check out the game, it's going to be links down below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out and bye-bye.